Well, I think we're seeing higher and higher every day because corporate earnings continue to be good. Companies are keeping more of, of what they make. And we're still in a benign, relatively benign inflationary environment. So this cycle doesn't end until you've seen a prolonged period of tightening. My concern recently has been along the lines of the strong dollar, and that has been part and parcel of concerns about where we're going with trade. You know, this is one step. We need to see ultimately what this means for the United States and China, because you would want to see some alleviation in the strength of the dollar, some moderation in the dollar, continue to support U.S. growth, help U.S. multinationals. So this doesn't feel like the end of the cycle to me. I mean, Brian, Nick, we did see just a little bit of the dollar giving back uh, some of the strength that it's built up on, on, on some of this news. I, I guess that is, does come as a little bit of a relief. Yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, August 15th, you saw a bottom in the Chinese renminbi against the U.S. dollar. And that's really been the date after which the S&P 500 has kind of melted up. So the mm. concerns about China, EM more broadly, especially Turkey, but also about the strong dollar as it relates to how these economies are going to function going forward. Uh, once that dollar starts to pull back, it's been a, a, a pretty nice window for equity markets to rip higher. I heard uh, some analysis yesterday, saw some headlines about how uh, people now think the yuan is not going to be a weapon in the trade war. You think that's the case? I think that's the optimistic case at this point. China has other things they can do to address their domestic growth concerns, which don't necessarily pivot around you know, entirely around what's going to happen with the trade relationship with the United States. They have other issues to confront, a slowing economy, slower secular growth, perhaps. They can do fiscal stimulus, they can cut interest rates, they can ease reserve requirements. All of those things help China's economy, but don't spook the international markets the same way that weakening their currency does. You know, watching what's happening, this is kind of a page out of the playbook that a lot of former ambassadors and trade negotiators had said that they wished we would take, which is to come to an agreement with many of our other trading partners like a Canada, like a Mexico, like a Europe, get everybody on the same page, and then go after the Chinese with a little more force. So anybody who's thinking that this means if we get an agreement with NAFTA that we're necessarily going to turn around and get a quick agreement with China could be mistaken. Does that matter for the markets, Brian? Yeah, it does. I mean, they can be mistaken. So I think the initial reaction was this means that Trump is backing off, and the administration is backing off, and we're going to proceed and start ticking off all these different trade agreements. I think you're right right that I don't think we get anything with China before the midterm elections and I think that that uncertainty continues to stay in the markets um, and you'll feel that through the dollars so in the near term we might be through another there could be another leg of some dollar strength and some deterioration in foreign assets but ultimately what we believe is these will get done it will be in the best interest of the global economy and the US dollar is likely in a longer term decline given the big deficits that we're going to run so I think short term another leg of dollar strength ultimately we're in a longer term secular decline in the dollar so what do you tell investors to do right now each of you so from my perspective this the environment hasn't changed significantly US growth is better the question is whether that's sustainably better I suspect you'll see moderation into 2019 which means this is still a growth in a slow growth world environment for those that are worried about the recent strength in the dollar and what's happened in the emerging markets, emerging market valuations are quite cheap. Debt and equity, growth looks sound. I mean, you strip out Turkey and Argentina. I understand those are, you know, meaningful, but more idiosyncratic. Um, growth across most of the emerging markets looks good. Valuations are more I mean, reasonable our growth, than they were.